Right, uh, Dr. Narayan, thanks so much uh, for that. Always good to get perspective. So, Radiko Khaitan is one of the topics as far as Dr. Narayan goes. Uh, we have the, we'll just get the management at QuestCorp as well. They have declared their numbers. Mr. S. Ramakrishnan, CFO at QuestCorp, uh, will be joining us. Okay, he's with us uh, now. So, you have managed to clock in a healthy revenue of 36% growth. What has been the key factors aiding the growth? Take us through whether uh, you can maintain this sort of a rate. Yeah, I think first of all, it's important for us to understand that you know the environment has been tough. Uh, it's not been an easy environment, considering the fact that uh, you know the economy is not necessarily you know doing uh, well, and uh, though there are a lot of revival measures going on, uh, you know the environment is quite tough. So I just want to make sure that you know we understand the performance in the context of the environment. So under those circumstances, if you look at you know the performance of Quest, we've done about close to. 36% uh, year on year growth on a revenue of which about 31% is organic and about you know 5% is inorganic. Uh, so we have very strong traction again on our uh, EBITDA numbers uh, also this quarter also for the year till date. We had about 52% uh, uh, on an index basis uh, as a EBITDA growth and on an operating basis about 23%. Uh, so we had pretty strong PAT numbers also to end for the quarter. We did about on an uh, India's basis about 75 crores and an operating basis about 79 crores. Uh, so very, very strong uh, numbers under uh, very tough circumstances. Uh, obviously, I think some of the wins which we did earlier part of the year, uh, you know, the first quarter and the second quarter is coming in handy. And, you know, we continue to maintain the momentum based on that. And uh, as we keep going through a tougher environment, uh, we also look at some of the newer deals. And uh, the year, in, you know, for the balance quarter uh, is also likely to be good. Uh, probably, you know, we are expecting that Q4 uh, is likely to be probably better than what even we have in Q3, though Q3 numbers itself are damn good. All right. Uh, you know, facilities management uh, business continued its strong organic growth momentum during the quarter. The revenues were up 11 percent. So, um, I mean, what's the outlook over there? Do you think you'll be able to continue this sort of double digit growth? See, facility management, what's happened is if you look at it, the revenue growth is only about 4%, but the margin growth is about 11%. And that's the reason is because we are trying to move more into SLA-based contract than headcount-based contract. Because what happens is, instead of just deploying headcount on facility management, what we try and do is take over the tasks. As we take over the tasks, then what we can do is we can automate, we can improvise, we can then decide how much headcount we need, and then the margins are much better. So if you look at our SLA based uh, you know kind of approach over the last you know nine months the ratio is completely we used to do only about 22 percent now we do about close to 26 percent or more on SLA based so that's kind of helping us improve margins and our focus is going to be more and more getting into SLA based contracts. Okay. Right. How has the general staffing business uh, growth been and what kind of growth do you foresee at a time you know when we are seeing a lot of layoffs across the sectors? Yeah, see, again, general staffing, if you look at it, you know, in terms of the numbers, uh, you know, while for the quarter could be muted, uh, but if you look at it for the year, they've added about close to 35% headcount, uh, you know, from a workforce management perspective. Uh, if you look at the uh, revenue numbers, they've grown about close to, uh, you know, 50 to odd percent, and the EBITDA numbers are about, you know, up 34% year on year. So, uh, obviously, you know, while, uh, you know, some of the sectors are slowing down, and you're absolutely right, you know, if you look at the manufacturing sector, they slow down automotive sector there is slowed on but if you look at our exposure to those sectors is you know absolutely minuscule so we don't have too much of exposure to those areas uh, having said that you know in some of the areas you know i think uh, beat our primary uh, areas of focus in wfm is on bfsi is on retail is on it and ites and stuff like that so that's the way you know the whole pie works and in all of those sectors we've been able to win uh, like I said, you know, this is a business which we like because it's an all-weather business. Uh, when things go well in the economy, people would like to outsource. When things don't go well, they would like to variableize their indirect cost. And there again, Quest is there. So it's not just a pure play staffing company. They, you know, generally companies look at us in terms of an end-to-end -end suite of services because, you know, you can do staffing and then do facility management and ramp it up to, you know, also technology, security services and so on and so forth. So it's a good entry point, but it doesn't stay there. It starts ramping up across other verticals too.
what is the outlook on the current debt on the books plans for reductions from here on so if you think i think uh, we've done a significant job in terms of reduction of our debt we started off uh, in june uh, more like about 1261 crores of debt and last quarter uh, you know we had reduced uh, significantly to about uh, 900 and, uh, you know 20 odd crores this quarter we've reduced a further about 90 odd crores back to about 830 crores uh, so i think you know we've been consistently reducing our debt numbers uh, if you look at a leverage ratio in terms of our uh, debt to ebitda from what was about 2 as of uh, you know last year uh, corresponding period today is about 1.3 uh, so you know in terms of a debt ebitda has been coming down consistently and the way things are going uh, we've told that you know, we will definitely hit uh, you know the numbers which we did as of march 2019 which was about 784 crores or so it'll be very similar to that or probably lower that's the target but what's important is that that debt level is being maintained after making multiple payments for various you know acquisitions and stuff like that like during the year we did payment of about let's say net of all sec cash we did about 230 crores of payment uh, we made a payment to for golden star close to about you know 40 odd crores we made a payment for vedang stake purchase about close to 10 crores we made a payment for trimax stake purchase about 13 crores with all this we are still managing to reduce our debt and that shows that the cash conversions in the company and the collections are going really robust Thanks so much, sir, for taking our time for us. Let's also hear out to another exclusive interaction. We were Dinathan, MD and CEO of IDFC First Bank.